morning and welcome to Low Country Community Church. I'm Jeff Cranston, the lead pastor here. I want to thank you for spending part of your weekend here at LCC. Our service will be starting soon, so as you're finding your seat, please help make room for everyone by scooting toward the center of your row. Also, please take a second to silence your cell phones. But parents, keep your phone handy so that our children's ministry can text you if they need to get a hold of you. Today is very special because my friend Terry Fox from Thirst Church outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is here speaking. So let's make sure to give him a very warm welcome. Now, if you haven't already, please find your seat. Today's going to be a great day. joined us today. We invite you to stand to your feet. Let's sing together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in oh, his love for me. Yes, his love.
Here we have a special gift for you out of the blue welcome tent. So grab your phone and text Hey LCC, that's all one word, to 99000, and we'll set one aside just for you as our way of saying thanks for being here. Today we have a special message from our friend, Pastor Terry Folks from Wisconsin. Terry's been coming to LCC for over 15 years, and I'm so excited to welcome him back as we continue this series focused on the last words of Jesus with a message today about Jesus telling the thief who was being executed next to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. What a great glimpse at the heart of Jesus. And I think we get a glimpse of what paradise is gonna be like with the incredible worship that we get to experience together every week right here at LCC. Hey, if you're like me and you love getting to worship together with such an amazing band, I wanna be sure to invite you to worship night this coming Friday right here at LCC. Music starts at seven, the cafe will be open at 6.15, and childcare will be provided. So bring your whole family, invite a friend, and come a little early and hang out with us. Now, we're gonna to continue to worship God through the giving of our tithes and offerings. So feel free to get ready for that if you need to be prepared. But first, I wanna thank you for giving to God through LCC. Last week, we were able to surprise our friends at the Boys and Girls Club of Bluffton with a gift that you provided on Everyone Tithe Sunday. Take a look. So, you know, we just finished up our In God We Trust series. We just had our tithing challenge where we were challenged to trust God with our finances and be good stewards. So I'm happy to be able to tell you last Sunday, we received almost $100,000 that Sunday. So we have chosen the Boys and Girls Club to be the recipient of our tithe back to our community. So we are gonna present them with a check for $10,000 today. Now when we go inside, they know we're coming but they think we're just gonna, we're just here for an update to show you all the work they've made on that literacy center. What they don't know is at the end of the tour, I get the privilege of presenting your check for $10,000 to help them in what they're doing. So come on inside with me. This is gonna be a lot of fun, right? Oh. This is gross. You've made a lot of progress. Yes. When we heard that they were building prisons based on whether or not that child was reading by the third grade. Right. That was mind-boggling. It 
was for us so, when you told us that the first time. So we uh, started our literacy center, our reading program, about six years ago. This program is ran by certified retired teachers. So right. we have the best and we have volunteers that come in and help. We test all of our members uh, to see what their reading levels are and we target those that are reading 25 to 50% below their grade levels. Right. And any child that has been in this program for one year or more uh, are today reading on level or two grades above. See, that's incredible. One of the reasons why we are expanding because there were a hundred members that we couldn't get into the program. Right. Right. Yeah, so this is gonna so let us address. That's right why here, I was right? standing here. So our capacity for the facility is 350, and uh, after we open this up, we'll be at 450. That's great. And then we'll talk about the second floor. Yep. <laughs> Good. Right. You're always thinking ahead. <laughs> yes. Well, here's we we're both in the life change business, right? Yes. And we just have been so impressed with what y'all do, with being good stewards. We've just been studying about being stewards of what God's given to us. And we all went home after our last visit and said, we are so impressed with what y'all do with what you've been given. So we have the good fortune of being able to pass a little of that along to you. Because our congregation wants to present you with a check for a little bit of blessing. We Always. just did a, we just did a, ah. a construction project ourselves last year. Oh, okay. And even though you've done an incredible job here and have incredible plans, we always know there's things that pop up at the end. There's things you need in order to really get it up and running for the yes, kids. Yes, yes. So we want to present Thank you with this check for $10,000. Wow! Oh my <laughs> God. We love y'all. You do an incredible work here. And we're just privileged to be a part of it. Uh, we are truly blessed and highly favored. And when you got God on your side, you can do tremendous stuff, amazing things. And we are saving lives, and this is what helps yep. us to do that. That's awesome. Oh, man, you caught me <laughs> off guard. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good. Wow. Now, if you'd like to find out how you can serve with the Boys and Girls Club through LCC, grab your phone and text Boys and Girls Club, all one word, to 99000. As you can see, what we give as a church matters because what we are doing as a church matters. So thank you for giving to God through LCC. And pray for our offering as we continue to worship today. God, we come to you in this moment with open hands, asking for you to use what you've given us, everything that we are, everything that we have, God, for your glory. In this moment, as we give of our tithes and offerings to you, God, we ask that you would use it, God, these gifts, and that you would multiply it, that, that kingdom work would happen in this community because of what is given today and what happens today. Spirit, empower us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Let's continue to worship as we give. stand before you now as honestly as I know how broken by the days gone by spirit help my soul to rise But still I fail And even then you're with me there You remind me I'm a child of God 
Regardless of the things I've done All my hope is found in perfect love Sing of his mercy thankful for your word and the truth of the gospel that you came to this earth to give us life. 
God, we just sang about your mercy, about your love. But God, I pray that your spirit would help make that become very real in our lives. God, even in this moment that you would open our eyes, open our ears to receive from you today your word. God, that your church that's gathered here would know your voice. And give us faith to follow you into the places that you're leading us to. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you, Jordan. Wasn't that great? Yes. Yes. They sing from the heart. You need that. They, they are believing every word. What's well, so good to be here, see, see you guys here. And we have people in the concourse out there watching. That's probably what, where I would be, drinking my coffee and watching there. And we named it the concourse, understand, because Jeff's going to plan on landing a plane here or taking off. So that's good. And we want to say hi to all the Facebook live people that are uh, tuning in. Yeah, that's good. Um, I so appreciate being here and seeing what God has done in this place. I came here years ago when it just started and, and to see the growth and it's just amazing. And uh, I'm just seeing God's hand all over this. And I know you all do too. So glory to him and praise be his name. Amen. Hi, it's so good to be back in the South. I'm, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and now I live in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, and a lot of lakes up there, a lot of wind, a lot of cold. When I left, it was 11 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I got unfroze. I thawed. That's what happened to me. I got in the plane, all of a sudden, water started dripping off of me. They said, sir, can you clean that up? I said, I'm feeling too good to clean it up. Um, so when you're, when you're in the South, you know, you're, you're, you're hearing things that you don't, and thinking things like, I, I love uh, these jokes, you know you're a redneck if, so you know you're a redneck if your porch collapses and five or more dogs die, you know, that's how you know you're a redneck. And, uh, and so I, I was thinking about the South, you know, here, here we are in the South, and you hear things like, because still this day up there, they, they, I'll go, you all, you know, and I have to teach them. I go, you all is singular. All you all is plural, okay? And, th and then tar, you know, uh, I've changed. I can say tire now, but I, when I'm tired, I go back to my southern roots. I go tar. And tar can be used for three different items. I'm tarred. That's what? I'm exhausted, right? Uh, I, I need to go change my tar, right? <laughs> That's the way I talk. And then, and then Jeff told me if I didn't end this thing on time, he was going to tar and feather me. So you, so you have that. So that's how you know you're in the South or from the South. And so Jeff and I were taking garbage to the garbage dump. That's what you do when you come and preach for Jeff. You help out in these chores. He get, be, be careful when he's around. The next thing you know, you're working. And so... He's, he's taking it to the dump because he doesn't have any garbage cans. And he said he's doing that because it's good stewardship. I think he's cheap. That's what I think. <laughs> That's my guess. My guess. And so we get there and I get out and I take three of the bags and there's three more left. And I grab three. And this lady who's in charge looks at me. And she, I said, what do I do with this? I know to throw it in the dump, but which it's, you know, it's laid out there. And she says, well, you need to put them down. I said, okay, so I put them down. She said, now come here and give me a hug. <laughs> I, you know you're in the South that the person in charge of the garbage dump is handing out hugs, <laughs> right? It has to be this. That's not going to happen in the Midwest. Not going to happen. They'll charge you in the Midwest, but they're not going to give you a hug. And she goes, now, don't you feel better? And I kind of did. I'm like going, Wow. <clears throat> So uh, here we are on the last sa seven sands of uh, Christ on the uh, cross. And I kind of fell in with Jeff, you know, like he told me what you all were doing. I'm like, God, that's really good. That, that'd get us up to Good Friday. And um, I want to talk to you about the clarification of Christ's mission. There's a lot of confusion out here, political confusion, uh, confusion over marriage, the definition, what it is. There's confusion over gender. There's just massive confusion, like I've never seen it before, ever. 
and it has bled over into the church. There's confusion over the mission of the church. I am one of these people that try to keep up. Oh, okay, what's that group saying and doing in this group? Because I want to know where is the church headed? Because there's always needed uh, for correction, right? That, that was the Reformation. The church needed correction. And in my studies and working with people smarter than me, I've come to the conclusion we are off mission. We're confused about the mission of the church. So let me give you some examples how this thing gets flipped. Well, how it gets flipped is, is uh, we start seeing the method as the mission and forget the real mission. So we're not to go in all the world and start Bible studies. Not again them, but that's not the mission. We're not to go in all the world and build Christian schools. Not again them, but that's not the mission. We're not to go in all the world and feed the poor. Not again it, but what? That's not the mission. We're not to go in all the world and dig wells to bring water, clean water to people. Not again it, matter of fact, for all this stuff, but that's not the mission. That's not the mission. So a lot of things are being done in the name of Jesus Christ, and they call it the mission. Okay? Good things, like going to all the world and walk and pray. That's a good thing, right? I'm not against prayer, but that's not the mission. So when you start confusing the method with the mission, the further you get away from Christ. But Christ, Christ is on mission. He's not about methodology. He's on mission. Think of Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Going to do that. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? And teaching them to obey. It's the obedience part. It doesn't say teach them content. We are. But content is no good. It won't develop character unless you obey it. And lo, I'm with you always till the end of the world. Think of Acts 1. Uh, 1 8 or 1 7 it says terry here i have to always use the king james version because it's the only time my name is mentioned in the bible <laughs> it says wait here and the power of the holy spirit you will receive power from the holy spirit and you will be my witnesses right to jerusalem samaria and judea and the other post parts of the world be my witnesses witnesses about what what you saw about jesus christ and more importantly, saw him accomplish that he actually died on the cross, was buried, and rose from the dead. Right? That's the essence of the gospel. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3. He says, more importantly, keeping this first, that Jesus Christ, what? Died on the cross, was buried, and raised from the dead. So that's the mission. You're going to see that in this, in his, this saying. So let's look at Luke I think it's chapter 23. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and not us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our de deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, I, I love the boldness of this. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. So the first point is Christ's mission is eternal. Christ's mission is eternal. What we want to do is look again at the Luke passage where he says, I got to get my glasses on. I know I only look 44, but <laughs> one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Save yourself and us. Do it now. Do it now. In Isaiah, the first and second coming of Christ is there. The gospel includes his first coming, suffering servant, Isaiah 53 right? But also in there, 
He is reigning prince, wonderful counselor. He, he is coming the second time. This criminal on the cross was just like the Pharisees. He's confusing that Jesus didn't come his first time to save us now. Get off the cross. Do it now. Now, it's okay to pray for now. Pray for healing now. Pray for God to act now. But the main mission was so we would have salvation, so we would be, be made whole. That was the main mission. It's eternal. It's big. You know how long eternity is? You don't? It's a real long time. I mean, forever. Listen to these words. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Wow. It's a long time. That's why you don't mess around with this life. You got one chance at this life. And where you stand with God is where you stand in eternity. God's interested in the now. Don't misunderstand me. But eternity. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Because it gives you hope. Right? Is there a heaven? Is there a place where eternity exists and you can spend with God? I think some of you know, I was, here, I was here last time. I lost my son about six months before I came here around that. It's been two years and two months. Mental illness, bipolar, it's a real thing. End up dying of an overdose of heroin because heroin is the perfect drug for bipolar. And so you don't think eternity means a lot to me? I do not grieve as others grieve, for they grieve without hope. I grieve with hope. Why? This life is really short, believe it or not. Eternity is a long, long time. People ask me, who do you want to see when you get to heaven? I go, my mom, my dad, and my son. That's who I want to see. That's eternal. That's what matters, right? Think, think of these verses. It's in, it's in Mark uh, 8, 36 through 37. Thank you, Gabe, for putting it up there. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? The most precious, precious thing you have is your soul. Your soul. Because it lasts for eternity. This body is going to decay and rot. And good news, we get a new one. It won't be wrinkled. It'll never have to go to the doctor. Right? No pain in the joints, no more Advil, no more whatever you're taking, right? Yeah, some of you young people saying, what are you talking about? You'll get there. <laughs> Trust me. So you have, you have this whole perspective. Save us now. Climb down off the cross and save yourself. Jesus goes, oh, if I don't stay here and do what I'm supposed to do, there is no eternity for us. So Jesus accomplished his mission. Second, Christ's mission needed a perfect sacrifice. Christ's mission needed a perfect sacrifice. Let's look at that verse again. It's in um, Luke. I just want to remind me what you read. But the other criminal rebuked him. Do not fear God. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly. The other criminals owning it. Like, you know what? <laughs> we're getting what we deserve. For we're getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. So it's a throwback. This criminal is recognizing that who he is next to is not who he is. So we'll look at 1 John 3, 4 through 5. Thank you, Gabe and Jackson. Everyone, they're sitting way back somewhere in some cave pulling this up. <laughs> Who, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared that he might take away our sins, and in him was no sin. For he who was righteous became unrighteous for our sake. Okay? Let's look at the Hebrew passage. It's 4.15. 4, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize I just got my feet you know, fixed last week, and now my mouth is broken. So that's <laughs> what happens. To feel with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, 
just as we are, yet he did not sin. Now, I come from Lake Country area up in, a, uh, in a Wisconsin, 30 miles outside of Milwaukee, okay, west of Milwaukee. And there's a bunch of denominations there, and they have a view that we hopefully don't have. So this is not a sidetrack. I'm trying to help you understand why that Hebrew passage is so important about who Jesus is. Because it's helping remind us, yeah, he's God-man. But don't forget that he's man. He was real human. He was tempted in all points like us. So a lot of times people feel shame. This shame is a real thing. And people turn and go and do more bad stuff instead of turning to God through Jesus Christ and saying, help me with this addiction. He already knows what you're hooked on, what's going on. He already knows the sin. He knows what you're doing. He's not going to go, well, I never did that. He was human in human flesh. And that's why you got to go, because where I come from, a lot of people turn to figures of the Bible, and they say to me, well, I could never go to Jesus. He's too holy. Then you're missing the point. You're missing the point that Jesus came here to experience this stuff so he could feel with us, so he would understand us in ways that sometimes we don't even understand ourselves. And this, so he went through all this, tempted, no sin. That lines up with the Old Testament. When, when you did the Passover offering, re- remember that? This is, this is happening during Passover week. This is where they're celebrating the Exodus, where they put the lamb, uh, uh, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, and God passed over, that angel of death passed over, and so no one was harmed except the Egyptians. And now Jesus Christ is is the lamb of God. And this particular lamb of God is the Passover lamb, where the chief priest went into the holy holies once a year to offer a perfect lamb, flawless, to God. And as I understand reading books, that they would put a rope around that chief priest's ankle because if God didn't accept it, he'd die. And they had to drag him out. Man, that's hazardous duty pay, right? So this, this is real important because Jesus Christ took our sins. That's what that first John, he took our sins. Behold the Lamb of God who's going to take away the sins of the world. We deserve to be punished. We deserved hell. But Jesus took that for us. He was our penal substitutionary, vicarious. Like, like because we believe in him, we don't have to hang there. And because he did all this, we have peace with God. God and you are friends. He even carries a picture of you in his wallet. Because of this sacrificial lamb of God. Because he was perfect. And this whole mission needed that. Without that part of it, what would we offer the world? How would we be unique? A lot of these churches I know do a lot of good things. Okay? Like this check being handed to that lady, 10,000. Kudos on you all, the staff, the leadership here. That is is so good. We're here in the community. We see you doing a good thing. But that woman has to be a Christian. That gives you an end to that place. Because in the end, we want those kids to be educated, right? And keep them out of prison. But we also want them in heaven with us. More churches need to step up and do that and make friends with people like that. That's, that's powerful. But if you're just doing it and don't give them the why, if you're just doing it and, and just doing good works without the why... How's that going to help? What does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and what? Lose his own soul. I'm telling you, churches, leadership, I read some of these books and I go, what? And what they're teaching is some seminaries? They're missing the main point. The job of a leader is keep the main thing the main thing, and it's Jesus and his work on the cross. Yes? Yes. It's a shame. Hurts me deeply. Jesus changed my life. Not because somebody fed me, 
because a man was bold enough to sit down with me and talk for two hours. I was an atheist, a drug dealer. I was a mess. And he introduced me to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'd be sitting there, and I went to argue with him, and I said, he'd quote something. I go, where'd you get that from? He'd go, the Bible. I go, that's in the Bible? See, a lot of people that are atheists like me, and a lot of people that want to argue with the Bible, just ask him this, have you ever read it? 99.9% .9 will say, no. That's why if you know John 3.16, you know more Bible than most people. That's, that's the truth. Can you imagine this Jesus on that cross? You remember, I know, I know Jeff took you through this, but I'm going to take you to the end where he's, his uh, ankles are nailed to the cross, his wrist, and he's having to breathe like this. And can you imagine this? conversation with him this day you will be with me in paradise because the third point is Christ's mission is to save the world save the whole world this day remember me at the end of this service I'm going to ask you to remember Jesus and what he did for you and invite him into your life Right? Also going to have some of you Christians pray a prayer with me. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you today you will be with me in paradise. Romans 8, 19. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. My point is, yes, Jesus Christ came for us, but don't forget, he's going to clean up this whole mess in this world. He's going to take this place and make it what it used to be. This was paradise, and we lost it. Paradise lost, paradise regained, because Jesus picked Abraham, God did, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit picked Abraham. He said, through you, Abraham, all the nations will be blessed. How is that? Because Messiah came and completed his mission on the cross, being buried and being raised from the dead. And it affects everything. The lamb will lay down with the lion. The lamb will be nervous, but still be lying there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen to Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. Notice the seek. A lot of people miss that. You, you don't just wait for them to come to you. The word go is a big word. Go. Seek them. Find them. You work with them. Right? Your neighbors with them. Your kids play together at schools. They cut your hair. I don't have much to cut now, but that's a whole nother subject. I heard you all thinking that, so. You're around them. Do they know that you're a Christian? They, they, do they know your story? Christ's mission was to save the world. He's, he's there dying on the cross, almost suffocating, doing evangelism. We can't do it in our coffee shops, in our comfortable living rooms, in dining. See, the, this culture is fighting us. It's not a political war that we're seeing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a spiritual war. Satan wants to shut down the church and close our mouths and make us feel like we're judgy and all that stuff. Jesus was one of the most loving individuals ever to walk the face of this earth. Who did he mostly hang out with? Say it. Sinners. I like saying sinners. <laughs> Doesn't that just sound more sinister? Sinners. I'm very comfortable with sinners. And some of that is I was one. 
you know. But my wife was raised as a missionary kid. And guess who she hangs out with? Sinners. <laughs> Sinners. Yeah. The church needs to get back on mission. We need to do the Great Commission. And the Great Commission works for America. We're living in a pluralistic post-Christian era. That's why this church is amazing. Y'all applaud Jeff, please, his team. That you all, this paid off and you can pour all your resources in doing the mission of Christ. Amen. I applaud this church and what you're doing. Glory be to him. It's inspirational to be here. Gets, gets my batteries recharged. I count it as a privilege to be here. I really do. And right now, I'd like for us to throw up the prayer for the believer. I want you to understand that if you don't, who will? God doesn't have a plan B. He wants to use you on this mission. That's how he trained the disciples. And it says here, dear God, thank you for your love for this world and for me. Thank you for the mission I am to be on in your name. Help me to be all in when it comes to the great commission of reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you Christians, would you pray this out loud, please? Ready? Dear God, thank you for your love for this world and for me. Thank you for the mission I am to be on in your name. Help me to be all in when it comes to the great commission of reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The other thing I want to do now is for you who are sitting here and you're not sure if you die, you go to heaven. Or maybe you once connected to Christ, but you're, you went off the beaten path. So I want to help you especially. If you're sitting here and you're not sure in your heart where you stand with God, and if you, as I read this prayer, there's a tug, that's, this is for you. Dear God, I thank you for your love of this world and for me. I want to now confess to you that I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, was buried and rose from the dead. Forgive me of my sins and thank you for your forgiveness. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. If there's any identification with that prayer, would you please pray it with me in your heart? You don't have to close your eyes or bow your head. I want you to connect with God and let God do for you what you can't do for yourself. Here we go in your heart. Dear God, I thank you for your love of this world and for me. I want to now confess to you that I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, was buried, and rose from the dead. Forgive me of my sins, and thank you for your forgiveness. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, would you please stop out at the info island and pick up, they call it uh, connect packs or follow-up packs. There'll be a Bible in there in case you don't own one. And I want you to read John chapter 3 three times before you go to bed night. And I want you to, tomorrow when you wake up, and by the grace of God, we'll all wake up and read John slowly, like maybe eight or ten verses tomorrow. And just work your way through the gospel of John and pray, dear God, help me understand you better and to walk with you, to understand you better and to work, walk with you. Yes? Make sure you do that. Give me your name, say I prayed with Terry. Lord, thank you for this time that we can continue in worship and honor you and lift up your name. Bless the worship band as they lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and respond. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb 
In desperation, I turned to heaven, spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is finished, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of angels stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior. I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Every voice.
Thank you so much for joining with us today in worship. We're so glad you did. If you need prayer, we have prayer teams on the side that would love to connect with you. Hope to see you next week.